Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week I've got two tutorials in one for you in this paper versus procreate video. So first we will create something on paper traditionally and then we will recreate the exact same project in procreate 100%. So I'm going to start with the paper one first. So I'm going to set the iPad aside. I'll walk you through the supplies needed and then we'll hop in and get started. All right, since we're going to be using watercolor brush pens, I recommend using watercolor paper for this. This Canson watercolor paper works perfectly with the watercolor brush pens. I am using cold press 140 pound. This is the larger size. This is 11 by 15 inches. And then I've just cut it down into quarters. So I took one sheet, cut it in half, and then cut it in half again. And this is really the perfect size for a project like this. I like to sketch a lot of my ideas out before I jump in and get started with them. So I just wanted to quickly mention if you're in the market for a really good letter size sketchbook I love moleskins for the smaller size but I've always struggled to find a really good sketchbook for the larger size this is my favorite one that I've come across this is an Arteza sketchbook I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description for this one so highly recommend this if you're in the market for a new sketchbook it holds up really well even for experimenting with watercolor brush pens and the texture on the paper is really nice and holds on to graphite super well so I've been really 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 happy with the sketchbook so far so I wanted to share that super quick. So to sketch out our base for our project I am using the set of Statler drawing pencils. I use these for so many of my projects. I'm going to be using the HB pencil right here so you can see it a little bit better on screen. On my own I usually err towards the 2H or the 3H just because it's a little easier to erase once your watercolor is all finished so you don't see any of those pencil lines. But so you can see what I'm doing I'm grabbing the HB right here. And then I'm using a Pentel click eraser. I love this because it's like holding a pen or a pencil or stylus, it's really easy to erase away whatever you need as you're working. We're also going to be utilizing some masking fluid for this. This is magic. This is one of my favorite finds of this year. I highly recommend this. Once you see it in action with these watercolor brush pens, it's incredible. You're going to love it. So I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description for this masking fluid pen. Um, it's amazing. So the watercolor brush pens that I'm going to be using for this is this large set of Arteza watercolor brush pens. All right, so just opening this up, this is every art supply lover's dream. Like, look at how many colors there are. I love this set. It's super mess free if you're traveling or if you need to conserve on space or you just want to experiment with a new medium. These are so fun to use and they're so beautiful. The vibrancy is amazing on these and they blend really well with water. So the two colors I'm using for this one are the hot pink and then this one is the eggplant purple. So these are the colors that I'm using to create this outcome right here. And finally, for these extra details or any doodles that you'd like to put around your watercolor black lettering, I'm using these Inconic pens. Um, they're fine liner pens by Arteza. It's a beautiful set. I love that the barrel is kind of triangular. It fits really well in your hand. It just feels really good the way that they're shaped. Um, I haven't really used any fine liners that are shaped this way, so that's pretty cool. It has a really nice hard tip on it and the ink flows really smoothly out of it. And once again, it matches the vibe of the watercolor brush pen so I love pairing these two together and you can see there's two two levels of colors right here so there's a lot of different color combination options with this set all right so those are the supplies that I'm going to be using and we're just going to jump in and get started all right so we're just going to lay this out so I start off by drawing my lines which are basically like a ribbon the front face of a ribbon and whatever I draw up here I just want to replicate it directly below it kind of making them parallel all right so once I have those angles now I can drop in my letters and I'm just going to draw in my H and I want to make sure I leave enough space above and below because I'm going to make these blocky around it so I'm just drawing out the base for my letters first And when I'm drawing the parts of my letters that align with my parallel lines, I'm just keeping them at the same exact angle as my lines right here. So I'm looking at what's right here and trying to match that angle as these move up. All right, so now I'm going to make these blocky. So all you want to do is with your base letters, you want to come around them and whatever space you put on one side of your line, you're just going to match that same exact width on the other. And we're going to come around all of the letters, keeping that spacing consistent. All 
All right, once you have your letters all blocked out, now it's time to add our masking fluid. So the important thing is, is you do not want to shake this at all because then you're gonna get bubbles and it won't come out smooth at all. And I like laying down a line on a scrap sheet of paper right here because usually the first time you tip it, you're gonna get a bubble that comes out and you don't want that to be on your lettering. So I'm just gonna give it a soft squeeze and just make sure I have a nice line going and then I can move to my actual artwork. So I'm just going to go along and follow all the lines I just drew. Okay, and hopefully you can tell that I don't put it on very thick at all. This takes a little while to dry and the thicker it is, the longer it'll take and you really only need a very, very thin line right there and that will be plenty for when we put our watercolors on this. So now I'm going to wait for this to dry and once it does, I will be right back. Okay, my masking fluid is now all dry. I can touch all the areas and none of it comes up on my fingers. So I've got my water brush that came with a watercolor brush pen. So I've filled the chamber with some water, so that's good to go. And then I've got my two brush pens right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in with my hot pink color, and I'm just going to paint the very bottoms of my letters, just like this. Okay, and I'm going to do the tops of the letters with the purple, the eggplant purple. Once you have both of your colors inside of your letters, grab your water brush and now you can start blending them together. So I usually keep a paper towel handy or a rag and then you're just gonna squeeze the chamber just a little bit to get the water flowing and then you can start blending the two together. I'll usually start up at the top and blend this one down a bit and then I will go to my pink afterwards. Now that I have the two colors separately blended, now I can blend them together. All right, and then I'm going to do that for each letter. Okay, and then we're just going to wait for that to dry and then we can peel off our masking fluid. Okay, my letters are all dry now. And now all I have to do is start rubbing on the paper where the masking fluid is and it'll pull right up. All right, and now you can see I still have some pencil marks on it so I can just go over them with my eraser and erase them away. All right, now all we have left to do is adding in those final details using our fine liners. So I'm going to adjust where these ribbons are because now they're feeling too far left. So I'm going to redraw these before I ink them. <laughs> all right, now that I've got my doodles all sketched out, I'm going to grab those fine liners. And I'm going to grab these two colors right here. This darker purple is the A136, and this lighter purple is the A184. So I'm going to use the darker purple for these lines, and then the details, I'm going to use the lighter purple. And I'm going to make these ribbon lines a little thicker than my supporting line. All right, now I'm just going to erase away those pencil marks. So there we go. That is the on paper traditional analog version of this tutorial. Now that we've completed the on paper portion of this video, it's time to bring it into Procreate and recreate the entire project entirely on the iPad in Procreate. So I have a screen size document already set up and ready to go. So I'm going to bring in my deep tooth watercolor paper texture, which is available for free when you become a free every Tuesday subscriber over on my website. I'll leave a link in the video description. You can go and pick up that free watercolor paper texture. It is the deep tooth texture that you want to put in. So I'm going to hit the wrench icon, hit add, and choose insert a photo. Okay, so I've got my texture all set to go. You can see it right there. And now I'm going to come over to my layers palette. I'm going to create a brand new layer. And this is going to be my sketch layer. So I'm going to name this sketch. And this is where I'm going to plan out my layout just like we did with the on paper version. So I've got two colors that I'm using for this project, the pink color and the purple color. I'll make this a downloadable color swatch that you can just install straight into Procreate. So check the video description and you can install that right away. The values, if you wanna input them directly, are right here for the pink and right here 
for the purple. Okay, so I'm going to return to my disc and I am using my watercolor lettering brush pack for Procreate. So these are the brushes that come in that brush pack. If you'd like to use the default brushes in Procreate, you can get a similar outcome. You'll be able to get the exact outcome using this kit, but you can also use the default brushes to get something similar. And you'll wanna visit the water category for the, those default watercolor brushes for this. I fine tuned this brush pack specifically for watercolor lettering effects in Procreate. So that's why I recommend the brush pack. So I'm going to grab my round paint brush for lettering and I'm just going to sketch everything out. I'm using a pretty small size, about 4%. So I'm going to draw out my ribbon shape and then I can duplicate this since we're in Procreate. So I'm just going to slide this over and choose duplicate. And I can tap on my arrow tool right here to select it, turn on my magnetics, and I can slide this straight down and it'll keep it parallel. And I can make it as big or as small as I want. And that looks pretty good. And now I can just merge these two together by pinching them. And I can reposition this so it's more centered in my layout. There we go. And now I can draw in my letters. So I'm going to turn on my grid, that way I can keep all of my letters straight up and down as I work. So I'm going to hit the wrench icon, choose canvas, tap my drawing guide on, and then hit edit drawing guide. And I'm just going to change the color so I can see it a little better into a darker color. I'm going to reduce my grid size so I have a little, I've got a few more options to work with, and then reduce the opacity so it's not overwhelming. Hopefully you can see all of that clearly. I'm going to hit done. And now I can just draw in those letters and I've got the guidelines to work off of to keep my letters straight. All right, now that I've got all of my letters in there, I can go in and thicken them up. And I'm going to color these blocks in. Okay, once we have our lettering all complete, we actually need to move our lettering onto its own layer. Right now it's on the sketch layer along with my ribbons. You can see if I turn it on and off. So we're just going to move our lettering to its own layer. So if you ever run into something like this in the future, I wanna show you how to do that where you can separate your elements onto different layers. So you're going to tap on the selection icon. You're going to draw a selection around whatever elements you'd like to move to their own layer. Close it up and then tap on the gear icon up here, hit add, and then choose cut and choose paste. And that will paste it in on its own layer right above the layer that you had previously selected. So I'm just going to label this one hello. And now if we turn this on and off, it's on its own layer. So really handy and really easy to move any elements that you might have put on the same layer onto separate layers. Okay, so now that we have this, we can apply our watercolor effect to it. So first I'm going to reduce the opacity of this so we can see our watercolor effect take place. So this is down to about, let's go even lower. Let's go to 15%, 14%. And now I'm going to make a selection of this. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select. And you can see I've got these diagonal lines, which means I have a selection. I can actually turn off my guidelines now. Those are a little distracting. So I'm just going to turn off those drawing guides and now we can just see our lettering. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new layer right above my hello layer. And this will be my watercolor hello. So I'm going to rename that. And then I'm going to grab my purple, make sure your purple is selected. I've got my round paintbrush for lettering selected. I'm going to increase the size of my brush up to about 40% and then just draw a stripe up at the top of all of your letters. And then I'm going to grab my pink and I'm going to draw a stripe at the bottom. So this is pretty similar to how we did it on paper, only we're in Procreate now. So you can see we've got a very intentional gap between the two colors. That's where they're going to merge together and blend together. So now we wanna hit the smudge tool right here and we wanna choose the watercolor bleed brush as a smudge brush. And what you wanna do is start with one color, very, very similar to what we did on paper. And you're just going to start pushing and smudging this color down. So I'm going to increase my size to about 15% and I can push my color down and then I can pick up the area where that transition is occurring where it's kind of fading out and just press a few times and that will give me a lighter fade. The more you do this the more comfortable you'll get and you can get some really cool results this way. So I'm going to do it the same over here and the whole thing I'm focusing on is I want to remove that line of where my color ended up here so it looks like a really smooth fade. And then I can start bringing my pink up. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with my pink. And where the two meet, I'm just kind of pressing and pushing very lightly. And those two colors can start blending together. 
If you want more of a watercolor look, you can actually smudge from the outside in and you can get these dark lines right here, which look a lot like watercolor. So that's a really fun trick that I also use just to vary up the opacity in the different parts. That way it's not super dark only down here and only up here. That variation occurs naturally in watercolor. So it's nice to put that in there in a few places randomly. Okay, so just moving on, I'm going to do the exact same steps for the rest of my letters. Okay, once you have all of your colors blended together, we want to put just a little bit more watercolor texture into our letters just to make it look that much more realistic. So with your smudge tool still selected, you're going to tap on that and this time choose the texturizer brush. And what I like to do, I have this pretty large, this is up to a 50% size, and I just tap with my finger in the different areas and you'll start seeing texture appear within the different letters. So this is just one extra detail to everything to make it look that much more believable. So the last thing you wanna do is apply a multiply blend mode to your layer. So tap on the end and choose multiply, and this will allow the color to blend with the background. So now you see the background watercolor paper texture bleeding through or showing through our colored areas, just like real watercolor would. So if we zoom out, we can see everything's looking really good. The last thing we need to apply to our lettering is that inline effect. So I'm going to deselect, so just tap on this icon up here. Now everything is deselected. We can see it really nicely. We're going to apply that inline detail to our letters by applying a layer mask. If you're not familiar with layer masking, I have a video on masking in Procreate. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. If you have any questions at all, watch that video. You'll know exactly what to do after seeing that. So I'm going to tap on this layer and choose mask to apply the layer mask. And I need to use black because I'm hiding portions of my letters when I create that inline detail. So I'm going to select my round paintbrush for lettering once again. Let me start over here at my H and I'm going to reduce my brush size down to like 5% and I'm just going to brush in that inline. Okay, so that looks good. And then the last thing we need to do is just apply those final details to our layout. And you can see we've already got the detail of our ribbons on here. So we just have two final pieces of detail that we can apply there. So I'm going to return to my sketch layer. I'm going to select my purple. I've got my round paintbrush still selected at a smaller size. Let's see, we got 5% still. And I'm just going to draw in some final details. Okay, now we have all of our details in there and everything's looking good. And there's one last step that we need to make sure that we do before we can call this finished. And that is heading into your layers. And we have to turn off our base hello layer right here. Otherwise, we're always going to have a little bit of purple behind all of our letters that we used as our template. So just make sure you turn off the visibility for that layer and you can see everything's looking much more like watercolor now. And that looks really, really pretty. So that is our in Procreate version and now we can call that done. So just a reminder this is the on paper version and this is the in procreate version. I would love to hear which one you prefer. Please comment the number one if you prefer the on paper version and please comment the number two if you prefer this version the in procreate version. This is also the first video that I've done with a paper versus procreate showing two different methods. If this is something you'd like to see more of in the future please let me know and I'll make sure to create more of these tutorials moving forward. For links to everything mentioned within this video, please hit the link in the video description. I also offer a complete course if you're interested in learning more about watercolor lettering in Procreate. I will leave a link in the video description to that as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.